Hey guys, Shoesville, how's it going? Um, we got ourselves a decommissioned polyethylene kayak uh, by Wilderness Systems. It's a Tarpon 160, great boat. It's got some major repair work, so they stripped it. And I'm going to rebuild it and try to repair this crack. It's pretty major, they didn't think they could do it, so I'm gonna try and undertake the project just to see if I can get two boats to go out fishing with uh, my friends. All right guys, so this is what we have here. Boat's been uh, decommissioned and been hanging around, stripped and ready to be thrown out. And this is what you're looking at for damage. Um, pretty significant. Um, it is polyethylene, so we're going to try and uh, use um, a polyethylene repair kit. Um, basically a plastic welder which is gonna be um, that right there, which came from uh, Harbor Freight. So we're gonna be using the stainless steel mesh. This is gonna be to apply below the repair area so we don't hit the other side of the hull and get melting there. Sanding the area. Some uh, aluminum tape probably to support the plastic underneath so it doesn't flop down when we heat it up with the heat gun. Of course, we're gonna clean it, sand it down, and the We've got a heat gun, a variable speed heat gun, and we got the soldering iron that came with that kit from Harbor Freight. Um, some of the research I did on material use, I wasn't able to get any, any um, I called Confluence, and World of Systems wasn't able to get any repair sticks for this boat. They don't even sell it. They didn't have any uh, real answer for me on how to repair this except to try K-Flex and fiber, and I've done some research on that, and supposedly the plastic welding works best. So what we're gonna do is use um, a plastic jug that has a stamp on it that says HDPE, high density polyethylene, which is most of your uh, plastics that you recycle, milk cartons and windshield wiper fluid cartons and containers. So we're gonna be using that scrap to melt on this hole after we prep it. All right guys, I'll give you a look at it in uh, a little bit. To get some of this glue off. All right, guys. At this point, we're going to set up for the welding. And going to slide this under the working area. So that we um, don't have to worry about spillage. And we're going to try and apply some tape on the other side of this so that it um, won't flop down while we're working. And it's just uh, aluminum, aluminum tape. All right, guys, and if this doesn't work, well, it was worth a try. We'll just use it with duct, duct tape or Gorilla Tape on it, but um, at this point, this looks like a very viable salvage, and the kayak shop didn't want to warranty it, and it was going to be an as-is fix, so, and they weren't even going to use um, HDPE. They were just going to do some type of uh, epoxy adhesive, and uh, a lot of guys online were stating that these adhesives last their temporary fixes for a month or two and that the HDPE fix, you know, the polyethylene welding would be uh, more permanent than anything else. Heats up pretty quickly. Takes a little while, it's a very slow process, but you can line it up back to its uh, relatively original position.
and you can tell when it's getting hot it starts to get shiny um, and slightly liquefied on, on the microsurface and that's when you can get uh, you can press it back into the into the joint area what we're doing at this point we're pressing the seam together before we add the wire and extra plastic this is coming out so that's what it looks like we kind of uh, fuse the two sides squish the soft plastic on both sides together uh, looks like a kind of a Frankenstein stitch and then heated it up again that's the initial process just to uh, get that material reconnected and from uh, this point um, we'll props prop something below the uh, luminized metal to give it some uh, support upward as we reheat it again and apply the um, mesh to it and we'll go from there I'll show what that looks like now we're gonna get this a little tacky and let it settle um, there we go let it drop a little and uh, begin to adhere the mesh and impregnate it It's a slow process. You don't want the uh, you don't want to melt it too much. I'm going around the edges right now, tacking it down. Alright guys, so I don't know if that's going to come out. This says uh, HDPE2 right next to the icer. Um, from the research I've done, this material should work better than what came in that plastic welder. It doesn't state what it exactly that would work on polyethylene, so we're going to go with this one instead. And we're going to cut some strips and start applying it. Make sure we get this uh, warmed up again. Guys, this is a long, tedious process, so not a five-minute thing. You've got to take your time, let it cool down, go back, apply another layer. Um, sometimes this stuff applies.
cut it to shape and melt it on, it almost goes on like shrink wrap and then you've got to use the soldering gun to impregnate it. Alright guys, this is a pretty big process here, I'm at the point where I am uh, applying layers and going back and grabbing the material from what's yellow and white at the same time, kind of trying to run it and smear it, melt it and smear it all into kind of one uh, unit without having much of a lip. So that's where we're at right now. You want to kind of melt the yellow and the white portion here at the same time with the tip right on the line. Push it in a little and then keep it. And you're going to want to make sure you have some time set aside. This is not something you want to rush, at least myself. Um, it, it's not the greatest looking patch at all. Um, I know that my buddy over at Reapers Outdoors had a uh, has a hybrid canoe that he had gotten a good deal on and he did a uh, similar repair and it's a lengthy process and you want to take your time and cool it down get a sponge with some water take a rest in between and then go on and reapply because you've got to let the layers that you've added below cool before you add the top layers or your uh, mesh will just keep unfurling from the plastic so it's done in layers and then you start hitting the edges and welding the two colors together and more layers and hit the edges again. But it uh, looks like it's going to be um, structurally sound and uh, from what I understand online much better than any adhesive uh, patch which would be temporary. This would be more on a permanent basis. All right. Hey guys, how's it going? Pretty tedious process. Um, I'm going to do a little sanding and filing can see here to uh, just get this uh, surface a little smoother and uh, make sure the edges are um, uh, doing well but as you can see when you apply pressure on this you don't hear any cracking and the side and the bottom both move together so it's looking like it's uh, gonna be a very viable permanent repair but uh, we'll take another look at it again hey guys um, you may have, have to resort to using a mini torch like I am at the end to um, bubble up some of the plastic on the outside and then force it down um, using that cold sponge. Uh, some of the layers and foliations didn't adhere good. There were some uh, ear pockets, so getting them out at the last minute here, right before uh, the sanding process. Okay guys, I'm using another technique of melting the yellow back onto the, uh, onto the white and it seems to be doing a better job. So you, it's almost like you have a paintbrush and you're pulling the yellow onto the white. It looks like a hot mess but uh, it's bolted all around the sides, it's attached to all the layers. It's been sanded and uh, cleaned up with lacquer thinner, 
going to heat it up a little bit just put a coat of paint just to <laughs> so it doesn't look like Frankenstein but um, it looks like it's going to adhere really well As you can see I'm putting pressure down both sides <clears throat> I mean I got the shocks on the trailer moving both sides are very secure they're flexing with each other you can see this no no separation in here in there nothing so it looks like it's gonna go uh, be a go and uh, I'm gonna hit it with the lacquer real quick and just uh, spray it with some uh, I got some leftover fluorescent orange from so uh, my hit with that so it doesn't look so bad but pretty impressed with it um all right guys safe waters and I'm not saying that this is permanent I'm not recommending it I'm just showing you what I did and there are lots of other guys that are doing similar projects um, check them out and Reapers Outdoors did a structural uh, repair of his uh, canoe kayak that he has it's like a hybrid and um, he gave me a couple of ideas on what to do with this all right guys safe trails